Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and we're talking about types of oxides. You know that when elements burn in oxygen, they form oxides. For example, if I burn magnesium in oxygen, magnesium is a silvery metal. When it burns in air, it burns with a bright flame and turns into magnesium oxide, which is a white ash. Also, if I burn copper, Copper is a reddish brown solid. If I burn it in air, it becomes copper oxide, and copper oxide is a black solid. You're actually required to know these uh, colors. Also, any other metal, if we burn it, it forms oxide. So, burning aluminium in oxygen would form aluminium oxide. Burning carbon in oxygen will form carbon dioxide. Burning sulfur in oxygen will form sulfur dioxide so whether we're burning metals or non-metals they form oxide but they form different types of oxides for example if we have oxides of metals oxides of metals are usually basic oxides and you remember that something that is basic reacts with acid so oxides of most metals are basic you should know that calcium oxide, copper oxide, magnesium oxide, sodium oxide, all of these are basic oxides, so they have all the properties of basic. But oxides of most non-metals are acidic. So carbon dioxide is acidic, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, silicon dioxide, all of these are acidic oxides. Now, there are exceptions. So if we say that oxides of most metals are basic, there are actually exceptions. So zinc oxide, aluminium oxide, lead oxide, these are the examples you're supposed to know. These are examples of amphoteric oxide. And I will tell you that amphoteric oxides means they are oxides that react with both acids and bases so if you put it with an acid it reacts as a base if you put it with a base it will react as an acid also if we say oxides of non-metals are acidic actually there are some exceptions so some oxides of non-metals are neutral for example carbon monoxide nitrogen monoxide the oxide of hydrogen which we refer to as water is a neutral oxide so remember that basic oxides amphoteric oxides these are oxides of metals most metals will form basic oxides zinc aluminium lead will form amphoteric oxide oxides of non-metal are mostly acidic but some of them are neutral carbon monoxide nitrogen monoxide and water and again remember that if something is basic it reacts with acid if something is acidic it reacts with base now what does amphoteric mean amphoteric means it reacts with both acids and bases neutral means it doesn't react with any of them it doesn't react with acid and it doesn't react with base so in general Oxides of non-metals are usually acidic, but some of them are neutral. Oxides of metals are usually basic, but some of them are amphoteric. So, for example, if I look at period 3, going from left to right in period 3, sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, these are oxides of metals, they are basic. Going into aluminium oxide, aluminium oxide is amphoteric. Do you remember what amphoteric means? It means it reacts with acids and reacts with base. Now, the rest of the period are non metals so their oxides are acidic. So, silicon dioxide, oxides of phosphorus and sulfur, all of these are acidic. Okay? When we say that oxide of magnesium is basic, that means if I dissolve it in water, it forms a base. So magnesium oxide in water forms magnesium hydroxide. If I say that carbon dioxide is acidic, that means if I dissolve it in water, it forms an acid. So carbon dioxide in water forms 
carbonic acid. Sulfur dioxide is acidic in water. Remember, sulfur dioxide would form an acid called sulfurous acid, H2SO3. Sulfur trioxide in water will form sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. Silicon dioxide is also regarded as acidic, but even though it doesn't dissolve in water, but we say it's acidic because it reacts with a base. So if I put it with calcium oxide, and we're going to talk about that when we talk about the blast furnace, that the silicon dioxide, which is actually sand, would react with a base like calcium oxide to form a salt. In this case, it is calcium silicate. Aluminium, we said aluminium forms amphoteric oxide. And we said, what does that mean? Amphoteric oxide means it reacts with acid and it reacts with base. So actually, aluminium oxide plus hydrochloric acid will act as a base. So it will form aluminium chloride plus water. Now, if you put aluminium oxide with a base, it will act as if it's an acid. So it forms something called sodium aluminate plus water. So let's take a look at some of these questions. The question says zinc oxide is an amphoteric oxide. Which types of substances will react with zinc oxide? We said if it is amphoteric, it would react with acids and bases. The oxide of element X forms a solution with pH 4. Now, what is pH 4? pH 4 is acidic. And he says the oxide of element Y forms a solution that turns universal indicator blue. If it turns universal indicator blue, that means it is a base. Which row correctly classifies X and Y? So if we say X forms an acidic oxide, so X must be a non-metal. Remember, metals form basic oxide. Non-metals are the ones that form acidic, so X is a non-metal. Now, Y forms something that's a base, so Y has to be a metal. Which of these oxides is amphoteric? Remember, we said, what were the examples of amphoteric oxides? We said the ones that we need to know are zinc oxide, aluminum oxide, lead oxide. So aluminum oxide is amphoteric, so that's actually my answer. What about calcium oxide? Calcium oxide is a base. Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is actually neutral. Sodium oxide. Sodium oxide is a base. Which statement describes the chemical property of aluminium oxide? We said aluminium oxide is what? It is amphoteric, so it reacts with acids and bases. Methyl orange turns red in the solution formed when substance R reacts with water. Methyl orange turns red if the solution is what? If the solution is acidic. That means R forms an acidic oxide. So which of these is acidic? The one that is sulfur dioxide is acidic. The others are calcium oxide sodium oxide, potassium oxide, all of these are basic. So my answer is D. Information about the solubility in water of four oxides is shown. Which oxide, when added to water, gives a solution with a pH less than 7? Where is pH less than 7? pH less than 7 is acidic. Which ones are acidic? You should realize that acidic means oxide of non-metal. So my choices here are A and C. Both nitrogen and silicon are non-metal. So both of these oxides are actually um, acidic, but he's saying when added to water, it gives a solution. So it must be soluble. So my answer is A. Oxides of two elements, X and Y, are separately dissolved in water and the pH of each solution is tested. So he has one of them is pH 1 and the other is pH 13. So obviously X is acidic, Y is basic. So which one is acidic? Acidic is X. So my answer is A or B. 
which one is basic y is basic so if x forms an acidic oxide is it a metal or a non-metal remember that means it will be a non-metal acidic oxide or non-metals while basic oxides are metals oxides of, of metals so my answer here is b reactions of four different oxides are shown he says w reacts with hydrochloric acid but not with sodium hydroxide it reacts with acid but not base so it is a base if it reacts with acid it's basic x reacts with both if it reacts with both it's amphoteric y does not react with either of them so it is neutral z reacts with sodium hydroxide but not acid so it reacts with base so it is acidic so which row in this uh, table is correct if you look at it that is answer d then we have some things like this suggest so the chemical equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide of course we said sodium hydroxide can react with carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is acidic and we said if you write a chemical equation this first of all would give sodium carbonate plus water this is acid plus base to give salt plus water and please do not forget to balance the equation silicon dioxide and zirconium oxide are both macromolecules they have similar physical properties but silicon oxide is acidic silicon oxide is acidic that means it should react to the base zirconium oxide is amphoteric if it's amphoteric then it can react with either acid or base now he's saying name a reagent that reacts with oxides of both so i want something that reacts with both of course in this case both of them would react with a base so name a base like sodium hydroxide name a reagent that reacts with remember the word reagent means something that reacts that's it a react so name a reagent that reacts with only one of the oxides so you can see that silicon dioxide will react only with base it will not react with acid so if i put hydrochloric acid it will react with only zirconium oxide and not silicon oxide this question is concerned with the following oxides and he's asking me about them so let's take a look at what he's giving me sulfur dioxide is what kind of oxide this is oxide of a non-metal it is acidic carbon monoxide remember this was an example of neutral oxide lithium oxide is oxide of a metal basic aluminium oxide was an example of what amphoteric nitrogen dioxide this is oxide of a non-metal acidic strontium oxide is oxide of a metal strontium is in group two so that is basic now he's saying which of the above oxides will react with acid but not with base if it reacts with acid it has to be basic so which of these is basic you have to mention both in order to get the grade because he's saying which of the above oxides so you should realize that both lithium oxide and strontium oxide are basic which of the above oxides will react with base but not with acid if it reacts with base it has to be acidic so which of these is acidic sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide which of the above oxides will react with both acid and base in order to react with both acid and base it has to be amphoteric so that is aluminium oxide which of the above oxides will not react with either if it does not react with either then it is neutral so carbon monoxide this question says antimony oxide is a white powder which is insoluble in water describe how you would find out if it is basic acidic or amphoteric so he has a white powder insoluble in water but if it reacts then it will dissolve so basically we're trying to find out it will dissolve in which one so i can put 
equal amounts of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid in two test tubes and then add equal amounts of antimony oxide to each test tube. Now, how do I know if it's basic, acidic, or amphoteric? Well, if it dissolves only in sodium hydroxide and not in HCl, then it is acidic. If it dissolves only in HCl and not in a base, then it is basic. If it dissolves in both, then it is amphoteric. So this is the kind of experiment you describe when he's trying to find out if something is acidic, basic, or amphoteric. It is possible to determine whether a substance is acidic, neutral, basic, or amphoteric using an acid and an alkyl. Complete the table of possible results. If the oxide reacts, you write R. If it doesn't, you write no reaction, NR. So let's see. If the oxide is acidic, acidic means it reacts with what? Means it reacts with base. So no reaction with acid. If it is neutral, it reacts with which one? If it is neutral, it doesn't react with either of them. If it is basic, it will react with acid, but not base. If it's amphoteric, it reacts with both of them. Are we following? Okay. Here he's saying beryllium hydroxide, a white solid, is an amphoteric hydroxide. Name another metal which has amphoteric hydroxide. We said examples of amphoteric hydroxides like aluminium or zinc or lead. So just what you would observe when an excess of sodium hydroxide is added to beryllium sulfate. He was talking up there about beryllium hydroxide. And he's saying beryllium hydroxide is amphoteric. Amphoteric means it will react with acid and with base. So here he's saying, so just what you would observe when beryllium sulfate reacts with sodium hydroxide. Of course, if I have beryllium sulfate plus sodium hydroxide, this will give beryllium hydroxide plus sodium sulfate. And he's telling me up there that beryllium hydroxide is a solid. So I get a white precipitate. But then he's saying he's going to add excess sodium hydroxide. Beryllium hydroxide is amphoteric. So if we add a lot of sodium hydroxide, the white precipitate of beryllium hydroxide would dissolve. So what I find is I will get a white precipitate first of beryllium hydroxide, but then when we add excess sodium hydroxide, it dissolves, so the precipitate will disappear to form a colorless solution. Okay, I hope this was useful. Thank you for listening.